Hello, I'm John Sargent and welcome to Argumental, the show where the hottest names in comedy debate the biggest issues facing mankind. Issues like, is it really too late for me to make it as a professional tennis player? <laughs> What's Louis Walsh always smirking at? When will Charles finally become king? And will it be just after the Queen fails to spot the roller skates he left at the top of the stairs? <laughs> Here to argue such burning issues and others like them are our teams. In the red corner with Marcus Brigstock this week, it's Sean Locke. And joining Rufus Hound in the blue corner, please welcome Sarah Millican. OK, let's kick off with round one, where we debate a big issue that's weighing more heavily on us than giving Fern Britain a piggyback. <laughs> Tonight, the subject and the discussion is surveillance society. Britain's streets used to look like this, but thanks to our surveillance society, that's all changed. And now they look like this. But can cops be bothered watching robbers when on CCTV there's footage of a hen night? The real crime is a white bra with a black top, but Crime Stoppers, it works both ways. Thanks to Big Brother, we can now prove that some coppers are as dodgy as we always thought they were. Oi, Gov, you're Nick! <laughs> but the issue I want the teams to argue over is this. ID cards are a cracking idea. <laughs> Supporting the statement on behalf of the Red Team, it's Sean Locke. Thank you! Firstly, they prevent terrorism. <laughs> they stop terrorism. Terrorism, bad. ID cards, <laughs> Terrorists, ah, <laughs> They beat us with the cards. <laughs> Most other forms of ID are quite easy to fake, but the ID card will have biometric data in it, which is unique, like your fingerprints or your cum face. It's as unique as that. <laughs> and that will be on the card. There it is. <laughs> A lot of people are scared of ID cards. Oh, they're scared they're going to take away, they're going to make us vulnerable. There's been loads of information out there, there's been loads of data stuff. There's very little to worry about, really. All that's going to be on the ID card is your name, your date of birth, your address, picture of John Sargent, obviously, <laughs> and, of course, your expiry date. <laughs> you, a lot of you looking like you don't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's my cum face. Um, <laughs> it's also going to stop a lot of everyday conflict. Simple, everyday conflict. I'll give you an example. What's your name, madam? I don't believe you. <laughs> Where's your ID card? <laughs> See? <laughs> Problem. <laughs> That'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> the reason we don't like it is because it's change and it's different and we don't like new, different things, do we? I mean, it's taken us a thousand years to accept olive oil, hasn't it? <laughs> And also, we don't like the name, do we? Don't like ID card. Sounds very official, doesn't it? You know, they'd be a lot more popular if they were called British loyalty cards, wouldn't they? <laughs> and you could w win patriotic nectar points <laughs> if you like, went on holiday within the UK, and you get double points for going up north. <laughs> and remember, we had ID cards. The whole country had ID cards during the war. There was no trouble then, was there? <laughs> That's why I think you should vote red for ID cards. Me. Thank you, Sean. OK, next up, opposing the statement and arguing that ID cards are not a cracking idea, it's Rufus Hound. Thanks very much. Um, so, uh, I'm here to tell you they're not a good idea, but that's obviously fairly impossible. How can I convince you people that ID cards are not a good idea? Because they haven't been tried before, have they? Nobody's tried ID cards before. They haven't been tried in communist Russia. They haven't been tried in East Germany. They haven't been tried wherever it is Tiananmen Square was. 
<laughs> in the past, they didn't have terrorists. Whereas we all know the most effective way to combat terrorism is better administration. Uh, <laughs> I don't know a single British person who, if you ask them what they think about the people who are in charge at the moment, say anything other than, and I bear in mind I'm on television, I've got to be very careful about the choice of word I use here, sods. <laughs> Everybody thinks that the people in charge of this country are ruddy sods. <laughs> now, you in the audience might be thinking, surely you mean fucking <laughs> but, <laughs> but that would never be broadcast on television, and therefore you'll just have to go with me when I say, ruddy sods. <laughs> All ID cards do are help the ruddy sods in charge of us know more about us. I don't know if you're familiar with how the people in control use our data, but basically if you ever want to find out anything about yourself, just hang around in the back of a cab long enough and somebody will leave you a laptop. <laughs> and now, the contract for designing the system that will tell us what we can and can't do has been given to IBM. Well, we've given them 250 million quid. Do you know the first biometric database IBM built? It was for the Nazis. <laughs> I can only see one way this goes. IBM at some point will have to say the problem with ID cards is people keep losing them. At which point the people in charge have to say, well, maybe there's a better system where they won't lose them. And IBM will say, yeah, maybe we could put little numbers, just tattoos, <laughs> on the inside of their arms. <laughs> so, let's look at the people who like the concept of ID cards. The Nazis, the Stasi, communists, and bastards. <laughs> Me and Sean. <laughs> so, either vote for Sean, the Nazi, Stalinist, Chinese bastard, or vote for Liberty and vote for the blue team! <laughs> Thank you for so. Sarah and Marcus, is there anything you'd like to say in support of your teammates? Yes, absolutely. How is John Sargent, after the sixth race at Ascot, supposed to remember who the hell he is? <laughs> I'll tell Unless you how, someone because... has written it down. Oh, no, I'll yeah. tell you how John Sargent remembers who he is after Ascot, because as he's walking out of Ascot, there's about 400 people going, John! John! <laughs> <laughs> Remind anybody who they are. Look, the point is, it says ID cards are a cracking idea. You got all bogged down in the implementation of them. There's a lot of things that are good idea. Jet boots are a good idea. <laughs> They're a cracking good idea as it happens. But in the real world, you just end up with scorched carpets and a lot of noise. Oh, okay. <laughs> it doesn't mean that it's not a good idea. There are details that need to be worked out in terms of implementation, but we all want jet boots. Who here doesn't want jet boots? No one. We all want them. <laughs> jet boots and ID cards. Yeah. Thank you. This Whereas is, a, a spatula is... made of jelly, that's a bad idea, it's isn't really it? A shit you can't idea. pick anything up. <laughs> <laughs> I think we win. And that's science. <laughs> yeah. That's science. What also, do you think, Sarah, though? What do you think? Yeah. I think it depends what's on them. You see, I'm quite happy to have one, but then I think, oh, no, they're a bad thing if they've got things like your weight on. Yeah. Like if they have your weight on, then how often can you get them updated through the year? <laughs> It'd be quite useful if you had the information put on there from birth. <laughs> Wait, oh, no. eight pounds six ounces. I'm looking fabulous. <laughs> eight pounds is quite heavy. Shut up. <laughs> Thank you all. So, our ID cards a cracking idea. It's time for the studio audience to decide who made the best case. Hold up your red card if you agree with Sean, and your blue one if you agree with Rufus. Vote now. Oh, bloody Tommy. <laughs> it's very close, but it is a red victory. Bollocks. Well done, Sean and Marcus. That's bollocks! Oh, it's us! Oh, thank you ever so much. Thank you. Thank you. They've convinced our audience that ID cards are a cracking idea. It's hoped that ID cards will help crack down on identity theft, although that might well scupper my plans to spend next year as Churchill the insurance dog. <laughs> Thank you.
Our next round is called That's a Brilliant Idea. We're going to present our teams with a series of totally preposterous statements. It's our panellists' job to produce an argument in support of these statements. When I think they've made a convincing enough case, I'll press my buzzer and we'll move on. One more thing. They must begin each argument with the words, That's a Brilliant Idea. Marcus and Sarah will play this one. Sarah, we'll start with you. Here's your first statement. We should crossbreed the cat and the dog to create the perfect pet. <laughs> this is a brilliant idea, because uh, what you've got really is not only the perfect pet, if you crossbreed the cat and the dog, you've kind of got the perfect boyfriend. Um, <laughs> bear with this. Uh, <laughs> you've got the snuggliness of a cat, and then you've got the obedience of a dog. That was, who wouldn't want a boyfriend who's got a little wet nose? Oh, he could fall asleep in front of the fire and purr and then kick his little legs because he's chasing other women in his sleep. <laughs> I mean, fair enough, the sex would be weird. <laughs> but not undoable. Marcus, the Lake District should be filled in. Oh, that is a brilliant idea. Ladies and gentlemen, let's fill in the Lake District and provide parking for Londoners. <laughs> Sarah, drivers in Britain should all drive on the right or the left, whatever you fancy. I think this is a brilliant idea. Or possibly that we could all just drive down the middle like pensioners already do. <laughs> Marcus, none should raise money for charity by doing a sexy calendar. That is a brilliant idea, John. None should, of course, raise money for charity by doing a sexy calendar. Why? Well, because nuns are married to Christ. That would mean you could buy the sexy calendar and say, yep, I've seen Mrs Christ's Nunu. <laughs> Sarah, the letter Q should be abolished. Uh, that's a brilliant idea that the letter Q should be abolished because the letter Q is the beginning of loads of the words that I don't like. Like to Q, as in stand in a line, uh, the Queen, shaking sud off. <laughs> Bloody quiche. It doesn't even sound like it starts with a Q, but it does, and it's just called pizza. Shut up. <laughs> Marcus, elections should be decided by who can take the hardest kick in the nuts. <laughs> Do I even need to explain how and why that is a brilliant idea? Let's just picture, for a second, David Cameron. Ladies and gentlemen, whoomph. <laughs> even if he became Prime Minister, you would always know you'd kicked him in the nuts. <laughs> it's a brilliant idea. Well done, both of you, but who do you in the studio audience think was the best at proposing the preposterous? If you think it was Marcus, hold up your red card. And if you think it was Sarah, hold up the blue card. Vote now. There's a very determinedly blue patch just there. <laughs> well, it seems that Sarah was the most convincing, so well done to the blue team. <laughs> Join us after the break and we'll be finding out whether Danny Dyer is an excellent ambassador for Cockneyland or just a total James Blunt. <laughs> Welcome back to Argumental, a show that gets people more pumped up than me in my muscle beach days. <laughs> right, next up is Slideshow. One member of each team will again be debating a controversial issue, but this time I want them to illustrate their argument using a series of pictures which they've never seen before. Rufus and Sean, you're playing this one. Rufus, I'd like you to start by arguing that fake tan looks great. Here's your first picture. <laughs> fake tan looks great. Who knew that the Wicked Witch of the West, but for the bit of application of fake tan, looked vaguely human? Uh, <laughs> Fake, uh, fake tan does look brilliant on anybody. I'm actually wearing a little bit on my nutsack. And uh, <laughs> where it did look like a wrinkled old man, it now looks like this. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, couldn't get much better, frankly. Uh, <laughs> although the ending's a little rough. Katie Price again. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't tan. I stay milk white. 
uh, no matter how long I'm out in the sun. If I were to go out in the real sun for so much as a moment, I'd come out looking like a boiled tomato. But as it is, a bit of fake tan, I look vaguely presentable, almost sexy. In fact, some people have said... <laughs> that I look better when I'm simply red. <laughs> I think, uh, really, what I'm saying about fake tan looking phenomenal <laughs> could be summed up by this picture. <laughs> and that is a man who used to be... Oh, no, it's... <laughs> I thought that was Pete Burns, but it's... Uh... <laughs> it's not. It is a woman who looks phenomenal because, you know what they say, if you're not orange, you're just not trying. Which is why fake tan looks great. Vote blue. Thanks, Rufus. Sean, I'd like you to argue the opposite, that fake tan does not look great. Here's your first picture. <laughs> fake tan does not look great. It doesn't look great. There's that famous song I wrote which said... Do you remember that one? <laughs> oh, fake tan, doesn't look great. It doesn't, 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 doesn't it not look great? No, it doesn't. No, it does. This, no, this isn't prepared. There's people looking at him. He's worked on this, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Berlusconi, he's got fake tan. And imagine if he wasn't the Prime Minister. Imagine if he worked on the roads. If he had a high visibility uh, vest on as well, he'd look like a banana, wouldn't he? <laughs> But this picture, I think, illustrates my point more. Scorpio, or as I like to call it, the scorpion one. <laughs> <laughs> now, why would you need fake tan if you've got a scorpion? <laughs> ah! There's my brother. <laughs> he first got fake tanned and he fell in the pool, didn't he? No, that wasn't him. That was his, that was his mate. <laughs> Don't show me a picture of him and not mention swimming pools. <laughs> it's not my fault. It's like, if you show me a picture of Peter Sutcliffe, I'm not going to start talking about Jim Carners, am I? <laughs> anyway, Michael does like a bit of fake tan. He does. He looks like, likes to look like a Ron Sealed trellis. He... <laughs> and, and he likes to stand near trellises so nobody can recognise him anymore. <laughs> but I think fake tan doesn't look great for many reasons. You know, equally, this one. Uh, eggs! <laughs> Rather than spend all that money on fake tan, have an egg. <laughs> Don't go to work yeah. on a fake tan. That's, remember that old catchphrase? <laughs> Don't go to work on a fake tan. <laughs> have an egg. <laughs> uh, Don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't like him. He's putting on the opposite of fake tan, isn't he? He's putting on fake... pale. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he's just getting ready? He's going, I'm just going to work today as... a... moon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Vote red. Thanks, John, Marks and Sarah. Are you fans of fake tan? Um, not normally, but I... I've had some on today just on my arms because they have to sort of de-northern my arms. <laughs> and I have to have it on just to bring me up to white because I'm purple normally. <laughs> I, don't, I, I think you should, be, you should be comfortable with whatever colour you are. I mean, my skin should only be red from either sunshine or spanking, really. <laughs> <laughs> I can spank if you like. <laughs> <laughs> should right. we all leave? <laughs> <laughs> you can stay. <laughs> 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 Don't you win? Don't you win? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just everyone, everyone gets hit apart from me. <laughs> Again. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, does fake tan look great? It's time for our studio audience to decide who made the best case. It's a blue card for Rufus, who says it does, and a red one for Sean, who says it doesn't. Vote now. <laughs> The eggs have it! <laughs> <laughs> a clear victory for the Reds. Well done, Sean. Thank you. Well done to you. Very well. You've convinced the audience that fake tan does not look great. There are many different types of fake tan, but ladies, they all do the same thing. 
make you look like a slag. <laughs> it's on to our popular culture round now, where tonight's debate is all about cockneys. London's East End is known around the world for its eccentricities, pearly kings, jelly deals, rhyming slang and crushing poverty. It's also home to pretend hard man Danny Dyer. He's the typecast gangster that real hooligans want to headbutt for making them look like nonsense. Mind your button smashers or Danny's going to fridge magnet your Bermondsey biscuits, which is all cockney rhyming slang for I'm talking rubbish. <laughs> But the statement I want you to argue is this. Danny Dyer is an excellent ambassador for Cockneyland. <laughs> First up, it's Sarah. <laughs> Danny Dyer is, is a brilliant ambassador for anything, basically. Uh, he's an inspiration to some people. I don't know if you know this. Uh, he recently inspired 50 Cent, the rapper, I know. And uh, 50 Cent said, I was inspired to act because of Danny Dyer. Now, it might well be because he's gone, if he can do it, then so can I. It's 50 cents from Gateshead. And <laughs> he does give people hope, though, because he, he sort of, he looks like the kind of man who hasn't got many GCSEs, doesn't he? <laughs> he sounds like the man who hasn't got any GCSEs. <laughs> he reminds me remarkably of a boy I went to school with who once bit his wart off as a gesture of love. <laughs> I didn't go out with him. I kept the wart. Um, but he is an object of lust as well for some women, isn't he? Some women, do you, would, nice lady, would you, would you take a pop at that? I don't know what that means. <laughs> Fuck him? No. Um, see, I think some women, you look like you might require wit and intelligence in a man, and I think women who aren't really bothered about that quite fancy him. Any man who's got a calendar, is in with them, I think, generally. And his, his, his surname is also a review of his acting. Did you know that? <laughs> he has got a Facebook group. The Facebook group is Danny Dyer, what a knob. <laughs> but there's only 2,000 people in it. And I know that there's definitely more than 2,000 people in the world. So that's a lot of massive fans of Danny Dyer. <laughs> So, contrary to popular belief, I think maybe he's not as much of a merchant banker as everybody thinks he is. Fourth blue. Well done. Next up, opposing Sarah and opposing the idea of Danny Dyer as Cockney ambassador, it's Marcus. If this is an ambassador for Cockneyland, it's disappointing. He should have whelks dribbling out the corner of his mouth and jelly deals in his pocket and crime on his shoes and all, like it's some sort of pearly outfit. You can't walk like that when you've got your hands folded in front of you. They've got to be out like that. It'll be a proper Cockney gazer. <laughs> what the hell is Cockneyland? That is the shittest theme park I've ever heard of in my entire life. And I've been to World of Leather. So, <laughs> one way you can tell whether someone's a Cockney is if they describe fights that happened in the past in the present tense. That's the best way of knowing. They'll say, right, me and the lads, we went down to Boza last Wednesday night. We've walked in. Oh, hang on, you've switched tenses here. Yeah, we've walked in. This fella at the bar, he's giving it that. I've come up like this, stood right in front of him. The tenses are going everywhere now. <laughs> I've seen that, come straight out of the bar. Bosh, crunch on the back of his neck. He's clavered all up the walls. See? <laughs> He's not an ambassador for anything. Where's the Ferrero Rocher? <laughs> None. What is the basic requirement of an ambassador? It's Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> right? And a Cockney one, he'd have one in each hand. Hey, look at that. Are you Ferrero Rocher? Lovely. Look at it like a pair of gold bollocks in it. <laughs> <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is why Danny Dyer is not a great ambassador for Cockneyland. Vote red. Thank you. Thanks, Marcus. Rufus and Sean, would you like to add anything in support of your teammates? Just, yes. Uh, I'd, I'd just like to have a quick word with Marcus. You didn't know what Cockneyland was. Me and Sarah have been there. I got a new knee. What did you get? You cock. <laughs> <laughs> this 
was the night the double act was launched. <laughs> da, 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 da. Newspapers spinning round, and they took over the West End. <laughs> they performed for years. Their films were a sellout. <laughs> Thank you also is Danny Dyer, the perfect Cockney representative. Once again, the studio audience will decide who made the best case. It's a blue card for Sarah and Rufus, who think Danny Dyer is an excellent ambassador of Cockney land, and a red one for Marks and Sean, who think he's not. Vote now. <laughs> hey. So that's a clear win for the Reds. Well done, Marcus and Sean. They've convinced the audience that Danny Dyer is not an excellent ambassador for Cockneyland. Of course, Danny Dyer is a successful actor. What I admire most about him is his physical versatility. One minute he's a dick, the next he's a knob, and then he's an arse. <laughs> so at the end of that round, Marcus and Sean are in the lead. Time now for the final round and a last chance for our teams to show just how argumental they really are. I'm going to show them a series of images. All they have to do is suggest what argument the picture is proving. OK, here's your first one. Is that halal? <laughs> <laughs> it's pronounced Halliwell. All right. <laughs> <laughs> is it Zoo Magazine's approach to dealing with swine flu? <laughs> it's funny, I can <laughs> see two wellies, four trotters and one camel toe. <laughs> I think it's a shame that they've airbrushed her husband out of that picture. <laughs> he I said, there's nothing I like better when she's washing the pig <laughs> than to sneak up behind her. Next. Go, isn't it? That's an argument for a new away kit. They're better with balls than I thought they'd be as well. I saw this game and the scoreline was uh, Everton 3, Chelsea none. <laughs> Press that buzzer thing, the show's over. <laughs> Here's another one. Wow. Here's an argument that the pet shop boys have let themselves go. <laughs> there you go, there's happy, dopey, sleepy, fuckwit and spanner. <laughs> OK, that's it. So for the final time, it's down to our studio audience to decide who made the best case. Red for Marcus and Sean, and blue for Rufus and Sarah. Vote now. Oh, that is a surprise. <laughs> so I can tell you the red team have won the round, which means this week's winners are the red team. Well done, Marcus Brigstock and Sean Locke. Commiserations to Rufus Hound and Sarah Milliken. That's all we've got time for. Good night. As you can imagine, I have a lot of fun filming that. You can watch outtakes from the latest episode of Argumental exclusively on our website at joindave.co.uk. And later on this week, Rufus Hound guests on our brand-new carpool. Robert Llewellyn hosts that Thursday night at 